I want to make the Life is Sweet block in Kimberbell's Red, White, and Bloom quilt. And the first thing I need to do is get the files from the CD that came with the pattern book onto my USB stick. My laptop has a CD drive. If yours does not, you can always get an external CD reader. They're very inexpensive and it will plug into your computer using a USB cord. Once you put your CD into your CD drive on your laptop or your external CD or DVD reader, you want to double click on this yellow folder right down here in the bottom of your screen. And when you do that, your screen will pop up with a window that shows probably whatever folder or location you were at last time when you stopped using your computer, whatever it comes up with, you need to get to the place where the CD is so you can see the files that are on the CD. And the way I like to do that is over here on the left, there is a quick access panel right here. If you cannot see this quick access panel, click on view and navigation pane. View is right up here. There's a tab. Click on navigation pane and make sure that is checked. And then you'll be able to see these files and folders. It just makes life easier moving around on your computer. I'm going to scroll down here using this bar. I'm looking for the DVD drive. There it is right there. Just click it once and there are your files. You can tell up here in this row, it says this PC, and then my computer has named it DVD Read Write RW Read Write Drive E. And then it says KD809, which is Kimberbell Designs 809 Red, White, and Bloom. And files currently on the disk is one, and it's got one folder right here. When you double click the folder, there are three folders inside of that. The double hooping instructions are for the Fireflies jar block. And then there are the embroidery files. And here are the SVG files for electronic cutting. I'll click on this one first so we can cover that real quick. Double click it. When you open this up, uh, my browser that I have is Microsoft Edge. And you may see a little browser icon right here, depending on what browser you're using. And the reason it looks like that is because the computer doesn't know what kind of icon to give an SVG file. That's a cutting file. That's a scalable vector graphic. And it doesn't know what kind of icon to, to use. So it automatically just assigns the browser extension to it. And it'll come over here and say, let me move this a little bit here. And it will say Microsoft Edge HTML document. HTML is a web file, but that doesn't mean that these are web files. They are SVG files. It's just that your computer doesn't know what to do with it. Like for instance, this one, these are the sizes for the cut files. And this document is an Adobe PDF document. And the computer knows what that is. And so it assigns it the Adobe icon and it calls it an Adobe Acrobat document. It doesn't know what to do with SVG files. That's not a standard file that computers are used to playing with. So it just arbitrarily assigned it something. So don't worry about that. You have the right files. All you need to do is to grab one of these and drag it over to your USB stick and it will work just fine in your cutting machine. When you open up the Adobe file, you double click it. This is going to go through and give you the exact cut size that you need for each one of your pieces. And it helps to print this out and keep it by your cutting machine, maybe keep it in your pattern book. And then 
refer to it when you get ready to cut your pieces. So you wanna make sure that your piece is cut to the exact right size. We'll just go through these and look real quick. So the Life is Sweet is what I am going to be making. So if I were going to pre-cut this using my brother's scan and cut, I would wanna make sure that the cut file is exactly 2.756 by 2.798. You don't have to use these. You can certainly put your piece of fabric over the placement line, let the tack down line happen, and then trim it around. But these are great if you're going to use a cutting machine. I'm going to close this out. So I am going to go backwards now. In order to go backwards, up here in the top, these are called breadcrumbs. This is like uh, Hansel and Gretel following breadcrumbs out of the forest. And so if you want to go backwards, you can either click right here and go backwards, or you can click this little arrow right over here. I'm just gonna click back. And now we're back to where we were. I want the embroidery files. So I'm going to double click it. Right here, you get every type of file extension that is for use in home embroidery machines. You just have to look through them and see which one. If you're not sure, check the manual for your machine. I'm going to double click the PES and inside here, you will find, here are all the files for the denim tote. There is the posies and pinwheel table topper. Here are all the quilt files and there is the tea towel. So I want my lemonade pitcher and lemons for quilt, double click that. And I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger by clicking up here in this top uh, box, it says maximize. And then to see it a little bit better, I'm gonna go over here to view. There's a tab, it says file, home, share, and view. I wanna go to view and I'm gonna click large icons. Now I can really see what it is that I'm after. Now, the reason I can see these is because I have a utility on my computer called Thumbnailer from Imbrilliance. This is an invaluable little piece of software. It works on every kind of computer, whether you have a Windows or a Mac machine. And I have a video that shows you how to configure this. It's very simple to do. You do not have to have any of the other Imbrilliant software in order to be able to install this on your computer. It's money well spent and it's very inexpensive and it's very, very nice. Here are my lemons and here is Life is Sweet. And I'm gonna make both of these. Over here, I have a, a quick access area on my computer. And that is part of the navigation that's up here. I recommend that you turn this on and leave it on all the time. It will make your life so easy. Go to the navigation pane and make sure that it's checked. If you click that box, make sure that's checked. And that way, see if I uncheck it, it goes away. Now it's kind of hard to move around. So this is just me. I just prefer it to check that. And why that is so nice is now I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to find, there's all the files we've been looking at on the CD. And now I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna find, there's my USB drive right there. And it doesn't matter what letter the computer assigned to it, you just need to uh, see that that's there. So I'm going to click on my lemons and I'm gonna hold down the control key, command key on a Mac, and I'm gonna click my lemonade pitcher and let go of control key. And I'm just gonna hold my mouse button down, my left mouse button, and I'm just gonna drag these. See the number two right there? That means there's two files. I'm gonna drag it over here to USB drive and hover over it and let go. And if your USB drive has a little light, it may flash. And if it doesn't have a light, that's okay. Now, if I click on USB drive, there are my two files right there. I'm gonna come back up here to large icons and take a look at it. 
Those are exactly what I need. And that's how simple it is to transfer the files from your CD drive. I'll come back over here to this file. There they all are. That's how easy it is. You just click on a on what you can do them one at a time as well. You can just take this. Let me do the jar of flowers. If I click the jar of flowers, you can just take one and drag and drop. And then sometimes you may have to hold it and you can scroll and then just drag and drop it. It's that simple to move the files from the CD over to your USB drive. And I'm ready to take my USB over to my Luminaire now. Also, another thing you can do, if you have Imbrilliance, I'm going to launch Imbrilliance real quick. Let me mention something else. This will tell you what hoop size you need. So to make the lemons, you only need the 4x4 four four hoop. To make the pitcher, the lemonade pitcher, you, you need the 5x7 hoop. If you want to use the 5x7 hoop to make these, you certainly can. You'll just use a little bit more stabilizer than you would otherwise need. I'm going to come over here to Imbrilliance. In Imbrilliance, it has a wonderful utility. Now, Imbrilliance is a third-party embroidery software. It works with every type of home embroidery machine. And once you get to playing with this, you will just absolutely love it. One of the things I like to use it for is to transfer files wirelessly to the Luminaire. If you have the Babylock Solaris or the Brother Luminaire, XP1 or XP2, it will work. So I'm not going to change the hoop size right now. What I'm going to do is open up this. I'm going to come up to the top and minimize, restore down, it says. I'm going to minimize this. And I could take it either from these files that are on the USB or I could copy from right in here from before. I'm just going to click one, not both, just one, and drag it over. And you see the little plus sign on the field and in brilliance and let go. There are my lemons. If you want to take a look at the design files, you can see them here and it shows you what all's going to happen and what steps. You can print it out from here, and that way you know what's going to happen when. But the book from Kimberbell also goes through each step and tells you what is going to stitch out and when. You do not need Imbrilliance or any other software to be able to use red, white, and bloom design files. But if you want to transfer them wirelessly to the Luminaire, I'm going to come up here to go Utility. Send to Solaris XP1. I'm going to click that. It wants a name. I'm just going to type in lemons and click OK. File sent to the machine. It was that simple. In order to do this, you must have your machine turned on. You need to have connected it to your home router already, and you need to have let it gone through its initialization sequence that it does where it originally moves the arm over and gets ready for stitching. So that's all done. I'm going to click OK, and I'm finished with this one. And so I'm just going to click New up here, and it gives me a new blank tab. I'm going to come back down here to the folder. I'm going to click on Life is Sweet. That one needs the 5 by 7 I'm going to drag it over, and I'm going to minimize this down just so you guys can see it. And I'm going to go Utility, Send to Solaris XP1, and I'm going to rename this to Pitcher, and click OK. File sent to the machine. All right. The first time you do that, it may take a little bit longer than what mine did, but after the initial connection has been made between your laptop and your sewing machine, your Luminaire or your Solaris, it will uh, be much quicker as time goes by because it kind of knows where to go. All right. That's it. So we have looked at the files that were on the CD. And we have figured out how to get to them 
and see where all of the SVG files are and then how to transfer these files over to a USB stick by dragging and dropping the ones we want onto the USB and then we know how to transfer the file over to the Luminaire or Solaris if you have one of those machines and you do it wirelessly. Otherwise, you are ready to take your USB stick over to your machine and start stitching. I hope this was helpful. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and I hope you subscribe for more tutorials and more stitching together. Go sell something.